Hi, my name is Kevin Guido and this is my 1971 T37. everybody welcome back to muscle car campy and we've got an unusual car for you today a 1971 Pontiac T37 what's a T37 you might say it's hard to say is it a Le Mans is it a Tempest it's definitely not the latter and it's certainly no GTO but it can give a lot of muscle cars a lot of grief in a quarter mile before we get into clearing up the T37 mystery, we want you to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell to make sure that you get a notification every time a new video goes live. Some think the T37 was only a performance car, thanks to Dan Jensen's strip-storming 455HO powered car. The reality is the T37 was an economy-minded midsize, and the base model is a stripped-down machine that can make a Plymouth taxi cab blush. The base engine was a six-cylinder, and a 352 barrel was available, and that's how most of them were built. Kevin Guido owns a 71 two-door hardtop, and it's one of only 15 made with the 455HO and one of six with the turbo 400 transmission. Supposedly, there were 11 two-door sedans also produced that year. Ultimately, this is one super rare supercar. You want to talk unusual? This car is one of only two T37 455HO cars produced with the hood tack. All right, we're here with Kevin Guido, the owner of the Superfine machine. You may remember Kevin when we shot his 69 GTO Judge a few months back. Now that car was restored with all kinds of magnificent NOS parts. He spent hours before the internet looking for parts for that car. And he did the same thing for this car, didn't you, Kevin? He did. And Five you know, the, re later. the result is pretty much spectacular, just like the GTO. Thank you. Um, where did you find this car? I found it in Newport Ritchie. Uh, I had just purchased a 1974 Grand Am from the same gentleman named Neil Ferentino. And as I was driving, getting ready to take the Grand Am home, I looked across the driveway, across the street, it's an unfinished subdivision, and this Le Mans was parked across the street, I thought. I said, whose car is that? He said, this is my son's. I said, can we go look at it? I said, he says, yeah, let's go look at it. So the first thing I noticed when I was walking upon it was the hood tack. I said, a hood tack on a Le Mans? Was it, was it factory? He goes, yeah, it was ordered with it. I said, really? He says, you want to see under the hood? I said, sure do. So he pops the hood. And being like the standard Pontiac owner, we looked for the two-letter code on the block. And I looked at it and looked at it some more. And I said, Y-E, Y-E, what is the?" Is that what I think it is? He says, it certainly is. I said, you're kidding me. This is one of the 15 with the 455 HO? He goes, it certainly is. So, uh, so you, now you knew about the car. Now you had to get it, right? I, Did you have a hard time getting it from him? Or? I was foaming at the mouth at that point. I said, my God, I can't believe I'm looking at such history here. Now, the car was in rough shape when I saw it to begin with. It was, you know, had surface rust all over it. It was nothing to really look at, but... That engine made all the difference to me. So I said, have you documented it with Dan Jensen? And he says, yes, I have. I said, really? So it is, it's legit, it's one of the 15. He says, it certainly is. So when, as I was walking away, I couldn't stop staring at the car. I said, let me know if you ever want to sell it. Nice, and now you were fortunate enough through that owner to find the original owner who was still alive and you got to talk to him. You actually got to really know the man I did and you took him for a ride in the car you took his family out in the car did you ever let him drive the car again I, I offered he didn't he didn't want to he said you drive it I know I've, I've driven it plenty 
Wow, and that had to be an emotional experience for both of you, really. I mean, I know the kind of guy you are. You're a giving guy. You actually let me drive your judge, yeah. which is kind of on a scale of 1 to 10, about a 98 <laughs> on uh, the nicest thing people could do for you. But um, when he bought the car, he bought it to drag race, didn't he? He, he, did. ran, he ran super stock with it. Yep. It was called the Gent. Um, he ran Oldsmar Drag Strip down here in Florida, yep. um, and he ordered it this he way. ordered correct? it this way. Wow, and tell us about the transmission, the rear, what, what, what transmission's in it? When I bought it, it, had, it was missing the original transmission, and it was a custom-made Cadillac transmission specifically to drag race with only forward gears. So I said, that's not of any use to me. <laughs> so I had to scrounge and you know, pilfer to find a correct transmission for it. And my buddy Bo down in uh, Largo, was parting out a 71 Trans Am with the correct PQ code transmission. So while it is the correct PQ, it's not number matching, VIN number matching. But it is Turbo 400 it is. as it's supposed to have. Yes. And this car has a uh, 355 gear in it also, correct? Correct. So, what? which was, is this, I'm sure he wasn't racing it in super stock with 355s. No, it had a 410 gear in it when I bought it. and I. And Neil, the second owner that I bought it from, had a set of 355s to go with the car, thank goodness. Mm. But it does have the original 12-volt Posi, XVK code Posi, Posi traction rear end in it still. So what we're looking at here is a very rare air cleaner. It's for a non-Ram Air 455 HO engine. And just so happens when I was, when, right after I purchased the car, I called Butler Classics up in uh, Wisconsin and I said, do you have an air cleaner for this car? And he says, yes, I do. I'm converting a non-Ram Air 455 HO car to Ram Air. I said, what do you need for that air cleaner? He said, 125 bucks. I said, the, the check's already in the mail. <laughs> That's an extremely rare air cleaner because of the dual heat risers on both sides. I was sides. gonna say, it's got heat risers on both sides. Yep. Um, the choke is here. I know your GTO had the choke. I know that's not an inexpensive piece also, right. but I mean, the power steering pump, the alternator, everything is just as Pontiac intended back in yep. 1971. Yep, it's got the correct open face 37 amp alternator. 11928 is the part number. It didn't have power steering on it when I, when I bought it from Neil, and, and that's the way Warren set it up for less drag while you're sure. you know, for drag racing. Did and the car originally have power yes, steering? Okay, sure so, so he removed it. Right. Now, there's something that's missing here that he didn't remove under the hood. There's no sound deadener or insulation. Nope. 455 HO's uh, equipped Le Mans and A bodies did not come with the, the under hood insulation. And I learned that the hard way because I ordered it from Ames then I found out they didn't come with it. I had to send it right back to Ames. <laughs> well, at least, you, at least you sent it back before you installed <laughs> it. That's a plus. But um, where are the numbers on this block that you, you saw when you saw the car the first right time? Right in the front here. It's hard to see. It's, a, it's, it's stamped on the block. It, you can barely see it. It's y, code YE. What other, are there any other OE parts under this hood? It's 800 CFM Quadrajet. That's special to HO. Single ring Venturis. I'd take it apart for you, but it's kind of a bear to put it, take it all apart. I could take the, the air lid off if, and show you Sure, I'd love to see that. Okay. I don't know if you can see the single ring Venturis from the top, because that's what's so special about these carburetors, but that's it's worth worth looking at if you can get in there. On just as it was after I uh, plastic media blasted the car. I think I showed you pictures of it, Jim. Mm -hmm. And I just chalked on whatever was exactly like it was and messy like that. And I bet you gave your painter a heart attack too when you told him you wanted to have some uh, factory. overspray, factory overspray under the hood. He must have looked at you like you had three heads. He really did. He says you're you're completely out of your, you've lost your mind. No. You knew exactly what you were doing. I, I endorse this uh, That's General behavior. Motors quality right there. <laughs> the General's quality. Well, you know what's interesting about these cars? You know, the Pontiacs always occupied a place above Chevrolet in the hierarchy. Um, that's what made them special. 
But when they came out with a car like this that was as bare bones, when we get to the interior, see a rubber floor mat, it was almost like they were like going after Chevrolet and Plymouth. Right. Not anyone else. It's right. kind of weird how it kind of went backwards. But of course, Chevrolet had been taking pages out of their playbook and going after Pontiac at the same right. time. So, right. Right. but. So see those holes? That's where the dual fuel pumps were mounted. The, the pusher fuel pumps. Oh, okay. And that's where the, the fuel lines ran through. So I left those there for posterity. Okay. Warren shared something with me while I was there at his house that day that Don Garlitz gave him a, a tip and trick as to how to fill the spare with water to make the, make the car squat when he, when he launched. So it took three guys to, at the drag strip to put the spare tire into the trunk. Wow. Those old timers, boy, they, they didn't have traction like we do today. There wasn't the traction compound that they used no. at the drags. You didn't have the tire technology, even slicks aren't what they are now. So probably a 150 pound spare tire, yeah. that's all you need. And, a, you know, that's a that's, squat. That's classic. That is really good stuff. Yeah, we've got NOS weather strip back here as well. The trunk was in really, you've seen the picture of the trunk when I, when I bought it, it was uh, just scaly rust on the bottom, which I redid, of course, with splatter. But on the, on the quarters and the wheel wells, it was, it's all original and it's in excellent shape. As you said, you added the trunk light back here. Yep. Uh, got the correct markings on the, uh, on the weather stripping yep. up top there. Yep, this helped um, the factory worker align the, the weather strip at the, at the factory. That's great stuff. This has never been touched. The quarters have never been touched. NOS jack and spare. Yeah, the spare, the spare tires in NOS. It didn't come with a co tire cover either. It no. was just part of the whole bare bones. Yep. And what was the base price on this car with like, before options? If the six cylinder was like $2,600. That was nothing. I know. In 1971, that, that was really cheap. That's what they were aiming for, an mm -hmm. economy car, but savvy people like Warren Young knew that you could order that engine under the hood with a, with a base car like this. So, so it's a, a taxi cab with a gigantic motor under the hood. Nothing wrong with that. How about we take a look on the inside? Absolutely. Let's do it. You know, when you look inside this car, you could see that it really was bare bones. Ironically enough, this car came with soft ray tinted glass, even though there's no air conditioning. You know, cars of this era, they just surprise you in so many different ways. Among the unusual features of this car, T37 only door panels, um, and in this color, you can imagine it was not easy. Thankfully, they were in okay shape. Kevin was able to reuse them. The floor, vinyl floor mat in this color with the sandalwood interior, I mean, just look at that floor mat. It's just, you know, no one's reproducing that. So it's not like if something were to happen to it, Kevin could just pick up the phone and order a new one. The one real deviation, Kevin added a formula steering wheel into the car, which was an option. It came with a really plain two-spoke wheel befitting of the stature of this car. What I found real interesting is 140 mile an hour speedometer was standard. This car has exactly 18,100 miles, 0.9. Kevin added the clock. It does have a um, AM FM radio. Obviously, no air conditioning. This is something you don't want to see every day. Wide track Pontiac matches from Outlaw Pontiac in East College Street, Wrightsville, Georgia. And notice on top, Cameo White. So these matches match the car. Kevin, you are quite a, quite a wild man, I gotta tell you. I mean, <laughs> this is too much. Yeah, I noticed the car fired right up instantly. Uh, who built the engine in here? A place called Fickner Engine and Marine in St. Pete, Florida. They did it in, I want to say, 1995. But then when I took the car up to uh, Michigan for the pure stock races, Dan Jensen took the engine, re dissected the engine, took it all apart, and gave me his blessings on the engine and said it was all good to go. All right. And good to go it was. You actually. Uh this car ran at the pure stock drags in 2004, I believe. 
and it was quite successful actually. What did it run? It made a run of 1310 at 104.87 miles an hour while gunning down a 69 and a half Super B with a 446 pack. And it beat it three times, right? You were paired against times. that car yeah. three times, so that's no mean feat for that, that engine. I mean, you had a couple more cubic inches, but he had three times as many carburetors as you. So yeah. that's quite a, uh, a testament to the engine, how the car was put together, and really tells you these things were ultra, ultra lightweight. I think the shipping weight on these cars was only about 3,400 pounds. I think you're right. Have you ever weighed this one? I mean, it's probably the way it sits, maybe, well, with me in it, it's much heavier than that. <laughs> but why don't you say you take this thing out on the road, let's see how this thing runs. Just power steering and automatic, those are the only real, uh, what would you call them? Luxuries Amenities. on the car. Amenities. And the AM FM. I'm kind of surprised to see that in there. Yep. Warren doesn't remember ordering it, but he said it never worked from day one and he didn't care. <laughs> never listened to it and didn't care. Well, it certainly uh, this engine will make its own noise and its That's own beautiful sounds. That's what he was after. Listening to the sound of an LS5 Pontiac 455 HO. Yeah, and I, I was going to tease you when I, you know, when I was saying, I said, man, you've got this beautiful Pontiac and it's got an LS engine in it, an LS5 no less. And, but of course, the real people know that was the Pontiac 455 HO back in the day. There was no, you know, the Chevrolet had the LS6 and they had their own LS5, but that was a completely different engine. That was a 454. Right. But um, now I'm I'm in heaven. I, I love the color on this car. It's not a real bright bright white. It's kind of like a little bit of an off white here. And um, but the sat the saddlewood interior. It's it's also very light. Right. I mean, it's just a cool cool car. And I mean, I just love everything about it. The uh, it feels like steel. That's not uh, right. Child safety. Uh, a pillars yeah yeah that's right man so again just took out a couple more probably they weren't concerned about taking out weight so much as they were taking out cost out of this car right i mean you don't even have floor mats for goodness sake nope. no floor mats warren didn't order floor mats it's too heavy i'm sorry but does the radio work now no it's, no i never got it fixed Wow. And I know what a purist you are about your judge. You went and found the proper AM radio for it and made sure it worked. You were very proud of the fact that that radio worked. Yep. And now you have it just like just Warren did. Like it's like a Warren tribute did. to Warren. And Warren did pass away. I, I think I have to commend you on really carrying on his legacy with this. And the car is being used now. It's being driven and enjoyed. Whereas when he, when he had it, he did... And it only had one purpose when he owned it. It was just a drag race. He drag raced it from 1971 to 78, all around the country. But mainly at um, Twin Cities in Oldsmar. And when did he sell the car? You say he stopped racing it in 78. Do you know when he sold it to Neil? 1995. Wow. So it sat out there for a long time. It did. Sadly. Mm. And what year did you pick it up? March of 1996 is when Neil decided to sell it to me. Now you are a real, you're not only a Pontiac enthusiast, but you are a Pontiac, you love the history. You are just, not just, oh, I like GTOs because they're fast or they look good. You really do enjoy putting these cars back together the way they were originally from the factory. It's one of my passions. Some people, don't give a crap about that stuff, but I do. I'm gonna be the, the guy who's the, uh, breaks your chops. I want you to put the original two-spoke ugly steering wheel back in here. I I don't know, that the formula wheel looks good and it feels great. It feels like a Pontiac wheel should feel, but to me, it's just, it's funny. It just, I don't know. It's, it's too much, too fancy for It's too car. fancy for this car. I have it at my house. I can get it restored. I, I put a, a quickie paint job on it and I, it started flaking, so that's when it really uh, put me over the edge to get this this steering wheel put in here. Okay. Plus, this was a takeoff out of a 73 Trans Am, so 
a neighbor walked across the street and asked me if I could use it. I said, heck yeah, I could use that. <laughs> Even if you couldn't use it, you could use I, it. Yeah, that's right. You know, it makes looks good in the living room on the wall. That's right. So. And I since found a, a correct, they call them fatties, NOS 71 and 2 steering, formula steering wheel, which I installed in this thing once. And then I took it back out and I put it back in the GM box. <laughs> What is your favorite part of this car? Is the the driving of it the just what it represents? She's just so plain Jane, very unassuming. You don't you don't think that until you mash into that pedal, you don't know what's under that hood. That's what's so exciting about this car. Like, watch what we do here. Much like your GTO, it just drives smooth. It does. No rattles. I mean, you did an excellent job on the restoration. This is largely the original suspension. As if, as why would I, why would I change it? It had 10,000 miles on it when I bought it. Sure. Short drag race, all quarter mile at a time. So I just left it alone, and she sits perfectly. Today, driving around in his old car, and basically in the not too far from where it originally lived and uh, where it originally raced I'm just I'm just happy sharing this car with the muscle car camping community yeah I can't thank you. thank you enough man I mean